Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about my favorite table, the periodic table. So let's start off at the very beginning here. In 1869, Dmitry Mendeleev, so M-E-N-D-E-L-E-E-V, organized, we're going to say a hundred plus elements, and so there weren't that many at the time, but now there's definitely over a hundred plus elements, in the periodic table. And this is the most important part right here, by their properties. And so he decided it didn't matter what color things were. It didn't matter if it was a solid, a liquid, or a gas. What mattered were their properties. How do these elements actually operate in nature? And so I'm going to extend a little bit onto that and say the word or the phrase valence electrons. And if you're not familiar with this right now, don't worry about it. We'll touch on it in a little bit. But valence electrons essentially are just your external electrons. So if I'm an element right here, all my protons, my neutrons, my internal electrons were all right here, very, very close to my body. My external electrons or my valence electrons are out here. They're not zipped in close tight to me. They're out here far away from my element. Again, we'll come back to that term in a little bit. But just for right now, just keep that in the back of your mind throughout this lecture. So what I want to do right now is just look at the periodic table and review the three terms that we've already introduced. So we decided that on this left side over here, we have our metals, okay? These are typically solids, they're typically shiny, they might conduct electricity and they might conduct heat. And then on our right side over here, we said that we have our nonmetals. These are things that are most likely gases, not always, there's a couple of liquids and solids in there, but they're mostly gases, they're not shiny, they're typically cannot conduct electricity and they definitely cannot conduct um, heat. Then here in the center we had eight different elements that we called our metalloids. And so now our metalloids are just some combination of the two. We can't strictly say they're a metal. We can't strictly say they're a nonmetal. They're just somewhere in between. But hopefully that part is a review already. So now we want to do is dive a little bit deeper into it. And I want to discuss some terminology that's commonly used when we talk about a periodic table. So the most important term that I want to get to today are that when we talk about these vertical columns like this, we have a word for them. So all of these different vertical columns, we actually call those groups. So groups are vertical columns. Now, we also sometimes talk about a row, okay? So a horizontal row, wow, I cannot draw a straight line, but a horizontal row is typically called, and you'd probably guess this by just knowing the name of this, a period. This is the periodic table. These are called periods. And so that would be a horizontal row. I think it's important that you know the word period, but I think the word group is way, way, way more important. So if you're only going to memorize one thing from this, I would definitely get the word group down. That is super, super important. Okay, so now we have two words down. We know that periods are across. We know that groups are up and down. Now I want to point out four very, very important groups, four of them. The first one is going to be group one. Second one is going to be group two. The third one is going to be group seven. And then the last one up here is going to be group eight. So let's go through each one of these individually. So for group one, okay, that's this first column right here. These are called our alkali metals. Our alkali metals are super interesting. They are very, very reactive. And remember that phrase valence electron? They typically have one valence electron on the outside. So everything's in the inside, but as a group, all of these right there in group one, they typically have one valence electron. Okay, we're gonna put a one right there. Now, let's move to group two. So now we're looking at group two right here. Group two, so this is our beryllium, our magnesium. These are called our alkali earth metals. So now we've moved over one position. Guess what, we've added an extra electron. So now this entire group typically has two valence electrons. So all of these beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, all of them have one out here and one out here. So their core is right here, but they have two different valence electrons. So now I'm going to ask you a quick question here before I move on to group seven. How many valence electrons um, are, we'll say, typical for group seven elements. What do you think? All right, did you come up with the answer seven? 
Hopefully you did. So let's talk about group seven. Group seven is also called the halogens. The halogens are extraordinarily reactive. They are crazy, crazy reactive, especially if you go all the way up here to fluorine. Fluorine is actually the most electronegative element out there, so it is dying to grab another electron. It is super, super, super um, reactive. So these babies have about seven different valence electrons on the outside. So for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine, they are all sitting right here, and they have seven valence on the outside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all surrounding them, and that all of them in that group all those halogens have seven valence electrons. Now let's move on to the last one that I want to point out. This is group eight. Group eight has a couple different names. The most common one is called the noble gases. Sometimes we also call them inert gases, okay, inert. So now I'm going to tell you a little secret. For most of the elements, especially in this course that we're going to work with, most of them, their entire dream is to have eight valence electrons. Like that is their goal. They have done, they've accomplished everything. So for my goal, that would be eventually to become the next Bill Nye. For these elements, their dream, their best dream is to eventually have eight electrons on the outside. So now knowing that, what do you think? Do you think noble gases are reactive? Good luck. 